Hey guys! <laughs> so, I know this is like a super weird angle, but I'm trying something new. Um, so I'm gonna cook for you guys, and then I'm gonna eat it, and it'd be really cool if you followed along, made this food, and ate it with me. So, I really, really like making this dish, and I've been making it ever since the whole Popeyes thing went viral, because I didn't want to go and be in their line and bother them. <laughs> like, for some reason, that just gave me so much anxiety to go and bother them because so many people were ordering that freaking sandwich. So, I am making a spicy chicken sandwich for you guys. It's super good. I've made it a few times now. And I really think that you guys are going to like it. So, if that interests you, please go ahead and keep watching. And don't forget to like and go ahead and subscribe because we're making chicken sandwiches. Why not, right? Okay, awesome. So I will see you guys in just a little bit and we will start cooking. And I swear by now it is not one of my videos. P.S. <laughs> I'm in my PJs. I'll probably change into something whenever I eat. Not sure yet. It's Sunday, you know? Like, we're chilling. It's, it's a good day. I have my pans already set up back here. I got some oil right there. Like, we're gonna get into it. Hi guys, so this is how you make the spicy mayo. Um, I use Valentina and um, Tapatio, but I mean you can use just one. Anyway, so I have some Hellman's right here. So it's like about a cup of Hellman's. Okay, so about a cup of Hellman's. I just have a whisk. You can use a fork if you'd like. But you just need something that's either a whisk or a fork. And then just about like a teaspoon or so of the Tapatio. And about half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of the Valentina. And then um, this is just um, chipotle pepper seasoning. And you actually don't need that much of this because it's pretty spicy. Um, you just need maybe a quarter of a teaspoon. I don't know. I never measure it. I just kind of go with it and see like what the color is like. So right now we have like a light, super light color. It's actually coming up a little bit more pink on camera. Let me see. Yeah, so it's coming up a little bit more colorful on camera. So let me add just a little bit more Tapatio. So I'm probably at like a full tablespoon and a half of Tapatio right now, or it's, excuse me, a full teaspoon and a half of Tapatio. But I just like the way that the Tapatio and the Valentina add like different flavor because they taste different. I don't know if you guys have had a uh, Valentina before, but it's got a really, really good flavor that mixes with chicken really well. I'm going to add just a little bit more Valentina. And a little bit more of this. And I'll put whatever like the actual measurements are like on the screen. I'll try to go with it when I, when I actually watch it back. Okay, so this is like definitely more orangey pink. So this is definitely more orangey pink. Um, this is what you are looking for. And then you just go ahead and put this. You can leave it in this container if you'd like, but um, I actually have more in the fridge, so I'm just going to add it to that. And um, yeah, you just have to let it sit for at least 30 minutes. It's good like if you let it go overnight, though. Um, cool. All right, y'all, so we're gonna make the flour part for the chicken. And I'm gonna tell y'all like what it probably is because I don't really measure stuff like that. Cause I mean, it's cooking, like it doesn't really, it doesn't really change that. It changes a little bit, but if you like cook a lot, then you pretty much know what you're doing. Anyway, so this is about maybe three-fourths cup 
of um, all-purpose flour and then I'm going to take some cornstarch and it's about the same amount I'm going to do a little bit less and I'll put all the um, measurements either on the screen in the description or both and we can just kind of mix that together real quick I'm just doing it in a little bowl because it makes it easier to mix it around and then we're gonna do and then I'm just gonna put some lemon pepper seasoning in here this is the one that doesn't have salt in it it's about a quarter of a teaspoon you can go really heavy with your dredge this is um some garlic powder half a teaspoon some onion powder about to run out whole teaspoon of onion powder I'm gonna have to get some more of that out of the pantry some smoked paprika just about a quarter of a teaspoon some regular paprika just for some color half a teaspoon some cayenne maybe a little eighth a little eighth of a teaspoon because I'm also gonna put this uh, chipotle seasoning in here I get mine at world market because uh, it comes in these little bags about a quarter to a half a teaspoon depending on your spice some salt that's some kosher salt right there maybe half a teaspoon and then I just got some Old Bay right here I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit in here y you can you don't have to put this Old Bay if you don't want to honestly I just felt like doing it today anything to help this flour get some flavor is gonna be good because any spice that you put in here like it's not that much like it won't come through on the chicken that much but it it makes a difference like if you don't season your flour you will notice and I think I'm out of pepper <clears throat> just a little quarter to a half a teaspoon of pepper so this is what I got so far some seasoned flour you can really just make it however you want but you definitely at least want to put salt and pepper in this okay so if you don't want any spice at least put some salt and pepper so you have some kind of something happening in there some garlic powder it's always gonna be good anyways um, so I'm just gonna set this to the side and let's go ahead and marinate the chicken as well Alright y'all, so I'm just going to make the um, chicken marinade right now. So I have a plastic bag right here. I have plastic bags. If you want to use a bowl, go ahead. So I went ahead and added two tablespoons of water. And that's just going to help add volume. And then I'm just going in with half a cup of buttermilk. And then since I have this, I'm going to add it, but you don't have to. Got a tablespoon of heavy whipping cream. And then about a quarter teaspoon of salt. And I'm just going to set this inside of a bowl so that it stops moving around. All right. And then maybe... A tablespoon or two of pickle juice a tablespoon or two of pickle juice in there and then I got this Valentina again about a tablespoon and some tapatio you can use Louisiana hot sauce you can use whatever you want and you don't have to use more than one hot sauce this is just the hot sauce that I have this is the hot sauce that I like I got Louisiana in the fridge but I don't want to use it right now So I would say all together with hot sauces, probably two tablespoons. 
Going back in with this Chipotle. Quarter of a quarter to a half of a teaspoon. I got the regular paprika, quarter teaspoon. A whole mess of onion powder, probably half a teaspoon. Some smoked paprika. If you don't have smoked paprika, if you only have regular paprika, or the other way around, just use whatever you have, it's fine. A little bit of cayenne. You can also use only cayenne pepper if you don't have um, the chipotle one or if you don't want to buy it, that's okay. Just got some regular pepper here, just going to add however much. And then I'm just going to close this bag real quick and kind of mix this around. It's a little bit easier to mix around before you put the chicken in it. And then let me go ahead and grab my chicken. Alright guys, so I just put two boneless, skinless chicken thighs in here that I washed. And they just, uh, they're just a little bit frozen, but that's okay. They're just frozen in the middle. And that's actually going to help them keep their moisture in just a little bit. And I forgot to add it on camera because I was going too fast. But I added um, another quarter teaspoon of this into this and a quarter teaspoon of the garlic powder into this as well because I forgot. So now I'm just going to stick this in the fridge and honestly you can do this up to like 10 hours. After like 10 hours it's going to be really weird. So you can do this the night before and then do it right whenever you wake up if you want to. Like if you want to have chicken in the morning. Because um, you don't have to fry stuff like this. Like you can marinate your chicken just like this and then bake it. Like you can do anything with it. So. I'm going to go ahead and do this for at least 30 minutes. The best, in my opinion, is 4 to 6 hours. And then we'll just meet back here. And I'm going to keep it in this bowl just so if anything happens in the refrigerator, it will catch it. Because um, every once in a while, the bag will open or stuff like that. And that way, the my fridge won't be all dirty. Um, but yeah. So um, I have some foil right here so that I can clean up really easily. I have my flour right here. I have my chicken right here. It's been sitting out on the counter for maybe 5 to 10 minutes just to come up to room temperature just a little bit. It's still a little cold. Um, I got some pickles right here because I want to make some fried pickles. These pickles are actually just going on the sandwich, but it's good to let them kind of dry out a little bit and that way they won't slide out of your sandwich. Pro tip. Um, I just added some vegetable oil to the pan. I just bought this today. Um, you want your pan to be half full of vegetable oil so however much and you want it to be in a pan that's like nicely sized this isn't hot yet so um, I got mine right here and it's just halfway up the side you don't want to burn your house down frying is um, a lot and I already set up a little tray with some paper underneath just so that nothing like gets too messy this is to drain the chicken on and then I also have a wire rack on a different pan for the pickles. And then I just actually have some softened butter here. I just put it in here because this is the pan I'm going to use to toast my buns. Got my buns back here. I like um, these Sara Lee Hawaiian ones because they're really soft and delicious. And I don't always use um, one of these thermometers, but I'm going to use one today because I'm filming, so it'll make it a lot easier to make sure that I'm on top of stuff. I just got this, um, I think at Target or so, something like that. They sell it at Walmart. I used to have one a long time ago, but I accidentally broke it like a little dummy. So it just hooks onto the side of the pan, and that'll tell me where my oil is at, so that's going to help me out a lot. So I'm just going to take this bowl that I had the chicken in. It didn't um, like leak or anything like that, so I'm going to 
make a little dredge for the pickles. I just mixed a little bit of heavy cream with some water. You can use any kind of like milk product pretty much. And then I'm just going to add some garlic powder and some onion powder and some onion powder because um, this flour is super seasoned so I can just do it like that. So all you have to do is just put these little pickles in here. And if you remember to save some of your um, like buttermilk mixture before you put the chicken in it, then you can use that. I just forgot to do it, so I just had to make a quick one really quick. And it's okay if this milk gets in the flour, because I'm actually going to add some of the liquid for the chicken in just a minute anyway. And then you just want to cover your pickles. And then I'm just going to kind of shake these off a bit and set them on that paper towel that I just had. And it's okay if they break apart and stuff, that kind of happens sometimes. Okay, so now I'm just going to um, open up the bag with the chicken in it. And I'm just going to let it hang out in this bowl for a second that I just had this in so that it doesn't get everywhere. And then I'm just going to add a bit of this to the flour. And then this you just want to throw away. It has fulfilled its purpose. And then you're just going to mix this in here. Get this fork out of here. So this is going to make your chicken really crispy and it's also still going to be adding flavor. So you just want to mix it up. It's kind of like biscuit dough a little bit. I probably added, I don't know, a fourth of a cup. Nah, I probably added two tablespoons. Everything's going to be in the description or on the screen. Okay, so now you just take your little chicken and you put it in here. And you just want to make sure you get a nice crust on here. And you just want to press it and then shake it off a little bit. And it should look something like that. So see how you see those little cracks and crevices? That's going to help with the texture of your chicken. All right. And this can hang out for a second while you're heating your oil up. It's all right. And if you want to make more than two, you know, just double the recipe, triple the recipe. doesn't have to just be two but it's just me so get one for now and one for later or two for now <laughs> all right so we got the second one right here 
I like to use thighs because they have more flavor, they're more tender. Popeyes uses breasts, I am pretty sure. But that's because it's easier for them. And this is why I like to use gloves because it gets all over your hands. I have you guys in a really interesting spot right now, so I definitely cannot really see what's going on, but these gloves are too big for me, which is why I use them after I dredge stuff, so that I can just get rid of them, but still use them. As soon as your oil hits around like 300, 320, go ahead and um, turn the heat down a little bit, because it will continue to rise. Okay. So the tools you're going to need, something with like a slotted edge to it, this is just a slotted spoon. I got a paper plate in case the oil starts splashing, I can put this on top. Because sometimes it does, it really just depends on what's going on. I'm going to fry these pickles first, I'm just waiting for it to get to my temperature, which it almost is. I'm going to go ahead and test one actually. And my oven is just on the warm setting right now, and that way my pickles will stay warm while the chicken is cooking. Great, so this oil is ready for the pickles. And whenever you're dropping stuff in a fryer, you want to be as close to it as possible because it cannot splash unless you drop something in it. There's no way for it to splash unless you drop it from really far away. See, I'm really close to it. It was all right. So you just put those in there, mix this around a little bit so they don't stick together, so they don't stick to the bottom. My oil right now is about 350. But yeah, this thermometer makes it really easy to just make sure that your temperature is in the right spot pretty much the whole time. And you don't have to worry about it. And then I'm just going to take these out for just a little bit so I can get a second fry going on. I just need my oil to heat up a little bit more. So I'm going to let my oil raise to about 370 and then put them back in here. And then you just want to have some salt ready so you can salt them whenever they come out the second time. And you just really gotta pay attention to your oil. Sometimes it gets a little bit too hot, so you gotta move it around a little bit. All right, so these are nice and crispy. They just needed a, just another minute. And now that I'm about to put these in the oven, I just turn the oven off, cause it's warm in there, but I don't want them cooking. Just sprinkle them with salt and then you just put this in the oven perfect and my oil is at a good temperature right now it's about 370 so I'm gonna put this breast in here and it's gonna start popping And depending on the size of your pan, you might be able to do more than one. And now that they're in here, I put them in there about 370. And the oil is just coming down a little bit. It'll go to about 340. Which is good because we're just doing a first fry right now. We just want to make sure they're cooked through. So set you a timer for seven minutes. Okay. 
And in this time, you can go ahead and get your other stuff ready. Okay, so off to the side here, I got my pan with my butter in it. I'm just gonna melt that on a medium high heat. I got my mayonnaise right here. I got my ranch. So I'm just gonna take some tongs and flip them around a little bit. My oil temp right now is about 320. So I'm just taking two buns. And now that this butter is kind of bubbling a little bit, I'm just going to dip my buns in so that all of them can be coated. And then I'm just going to toast them. So it's been about five minutes. I'm going to go ahead and take this chicken out. See, the oil's kind of calming down a little bit. Whenever you're frying stuff, oil makes scary noises, but it's not as scary as it seems. I spent a lot of years frying stuff in a kitchen, and if you're doing everything safely, it is really hard to mess up. Halfway to the top to your pan, less if you're really scared. Don't overheat it. Keep your oil on a medium, low, Sometimes you can turn it up a little bit depending on your stove, heat. As soon as you see it get above 350, if it's going rapidly, turn it off. Sometimes you have to take it off the heat. And these pickles I'm using are just these dill pickle planks by Best Made. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the temperature of this chicken. And it's cooked. It's at 160 right now. As soon as I put this back in here, I'm going to leave it in here for two minutes. It's going to be done. You know your buns are done whenever you get a good color on them like that. It's okay if they get a little bit too brown too. That's all right. But don't take it too, too far because they go quick. So our oil is ready to put these back in. And this is the time that you'll need your paper plate. You don't want to close them in there because it'll make the oil too hot. So just now I have my oil a little bit too hot. I turn my fire off and I put the chicken in there and now it's at a good temperature. As soon as they get a good color on them, you just want to pull them out, put a little salt. You're just going to let them hang out right here for just a little bit while you prep your other stuff. I would take the temperature of them to make sure, but I know they're done. So this is what we got right now. So I got our buns right here. And then you just want to take your mayo. I'm just using an offset spatula because that's the first thing that I thought to grab. And you can put however much mayo you want on this thing, but 
mayo will go into a bun really easily, so you want to make sure you put enough. You have to put like four times as much mayo as you would mustard on something. Because mustard is strong. And I haven't eaten yet today, so I am hungry. But it's just right here. And then you just put your little pickles right on the top bun. Now you put these chicken right there. And even though it's a lot of steps, it's really quick and easy once you get everything started. Hi guys! So thank you so much for watching. Um, it was my first time like kind of like cooking on camera. I've done like some Facebook lives before, but not like a tutorial, so you guys know that I like to talk a lot. So I'm gonna I'm I'm thinking about how I'm gonna edit it right now. Um, so I have these crispy chicken sandwiches and some fried pickles. And they are just looking so good. So I can't wait for you guys to hear this crunch. Let's just get a fried pickle first. And this is Chef John's uh, ranch recipe. I'll link it below. I haven't had any food yet. So I'm so excited. It's still so hot. I made Chef John's ranch a couple days ago and it is so like thick and delicious. This chicken sandwich is still so hot. And it's so moist from the chicken thigh too.
And the way I make mine isn't to be like so spicy it's gonna like burn your face off. It's just to add flavor. Like it's not even like that spicy. Um, so if you want it more spicy, you can add probably a tablespoon more of um, cayenne to the flour and it would definitely get there. What I love about cooking with the thighs is that, like, it's really hard to overcook them. Like, <laughs> they're so moist and juicy that it's just, it's, it's good for people that are beginning cooking because breasts overcook in like five seconds. <laughs> And I love that this is crispy until the last bite. Alright guys, so thanks so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, I certainly did. These sandwiches are so good. Um, I'm just going to save this one for later. And yeah, I can't wait for you guys to make this. Tell me what you think. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. said that already. Um, leave me a comment. Let me know what you want me to do. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have a great day or a great night wherever you are. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye guys.